Hello and welcome back. This is Dr. Edward Madama and this time we are going to discuss the different learning delivery modalities for this school year 2020-2021 as prescribed by the Department of Education of the Philippines. So this is in response to the pandemic that we are all experiencing right now. So let's start. The frequently asked questions on the different learning delivery modalities are the following. And the first question is, what is distance learning? So, for the purpose of this discussion, I will be using the following acronyms from time to time. Some of them are the following. So, we have LDM referring to learning delivery modalities, HEI referring to higher education institutions, DL referring to distance learning, F2F referring to face-to-face. -to -face. So distance learning has been around even before the pandemic. This was offered by Higher Education Institutions or HEI as an LDM or learning delivery modality of their open university program. This refers to a learning delivery modality where learning takes place between the teacher and the learner who are geographically remote from each other during instruction. This is an arranged class, a setup where learners are not required to personally attend F2F classes. This was conceptualized to cater to the working and professional students. The next question, what is modular distance learning? So in order to facilitate understanding of this term, we are going to divide this into two, modular or module and distance learning. So what is a module or what is the objective of a module? A module is a self-paced learning in an orderly set of instruction designed to facilitate the learner's mastery of a body of knowledge or a procedure. The objective of a module is to facilitate self-paced learning. So the learners are provided with various materials in different formats like printed, digital, or electronic in the form of a textbook, activity sheets, and study guides away and apart from the conventional face-to-face -face classroom setting. Okay, moving on to our next question, we have what is online distance learning? So distance learning is a feature where the teacher facilitates learning and engages learners active participation using various technologies, devices, in order to access information through the internet while they are geographically remote from each other during instruction. So one of the most common devices or gadgets used in order to access information given by the teacher are cellular phones or cell phones. But cell phones have their limitations in their ability and capacity to access information. That is why some academic institutions are requiring the use of laptops in uh, implementing this modality which is online distance learning. But aside from cell phones and laptops, tablets are also being introduced as an alternative in order to access information in online distance learning. Okay, so the next question is, what is homeschooling? So homeschooling is an ADM or alternative delivery mode that aims to provide learners with equal access to quality basic education through a home-based environment to be facilitated by qualified parents, guardians, or tutors who have undergone relevant training. So in this type of modality, learning takes place at home facilitated by people who have undergone relevant training in education. And again, I would like to emphasize that even before the pandemic, uh, homeschooling has already evolved into two types, which is F2F and online. So this may take place personally or face-to-face -face with a tutor or a teacher, or it can also be done online 
through the use of the internet and gadgets that were discussed earlier. What is blended learning? So blended learning refers to a learning modality that allows for a combination of face-to-face -face and online distance learning, face-to-face -face and modular distance learning, face-to-face -face and radio TV based instruction or RBI, or face-to-face -face learning and a combination of two or more types of distance learning. So the outline of blended learning is to combine conventional strategies with technology or the use of technology. What is traditional face-to-face -face learning? This refers to learning delivery modality, which we are all too familiar with before the pandemic started, where the students and the teachers are both physically present in the classroom and there are opportunities for active engagement, activities, immediate feedback, and social emotional development of the learners. And last but not the least, what is ADMs or alternative delivery modes? ADMs are tried and tested alternative modalities of education delivery within the confines of the formal system that allows school to deliver quality education to marginalized students and those at risk of dropping out in order to help them overcome personal, social, and economic constraints in their schooling. One type of ADM being prepared today by the DepEd in order to address the pandemic and the absence of face-to-face -face or the limited um, interaction during the conventional learning of face-to-face -face are learning modules or the printed learning modules. For today's episode of our INSET, we are going to focus on the learning interventions in the new normal. But before we continue, 
let us first be oriented about the learning objectives we need to accomplish for this episode. Number one, explain the learning intervention guidelines in the new normal mandated by DepEd. Number two, apply the learning intervention guidelines in concrete and hypothetical situations. Number three, foster positive attitude towards the learning intervention guidelines in the new normal. And the last one is develop a sense of accountability towards learning outcomes by way of proactive interventions to learners who have academic, financial, psycho-emotional, and family difficulties. Meanwhile, good morning. Oh, from the from the Osa, as I'm not my classmate, eh? City naman. Zai! Hi, Zai! Uy, assignment. Kita na doha? Um, kita rang doha. Wa pa sila. Pero ba't assignment? Uy! English, uy! Ah, ma! Basta na ato! Ay, si Tanya. Wa pa lagi ba? Assignment ba? Suga ba ba? Hi, Tanya! Hi, Tanya! Ang mga ibuhat niya, 
di umano'y nag-post ng kanyang reklamo sa Facebook patungkol sa kanyang module na mahirap sagutin. Base sa post ng nasabing bata, Pisting module ay dilin taon mi bright ka ayun na maansira na mo ang pang senior high na lesson. Dili yun in taon 3D among utok, okay? Grade 9 pa mi, dili mi grade 11 and 12. Isa sa mga guro ng paaralan ay nagbigay ng kanyang komento patungkol sa post. Ayon sa kanya, In lieu of the recent post of a student complaining about the module, we would like to suggest a better way to solve the problem. If you find the module and the activity difficult, feel free to contact the teacher and ask him or her politely about your queries. Our cell phone numbers and names are printed at the bottom of the module. If you can't find any number, you can chat us. Demeaning the module and cursing the teachers will not be beneficial to you or to anyone. Being reactive about it is not the solution. Let us be proactive and be respectful. Let us work hand in hand. Remember that we are a family and families reach out to one another. Umani ng batikos ang Facebook post ng isang netizen dahil sa kanyang pahayag tungkol sa mga maling module. Sa kanyang post, sinabi niyang, Mauni karon ang new learning sa DepEd. Ang mga new learning sa mga kabataan karon. So, kahibalo na ta kung unsa gyud ang future ani nila. No offense to our teachers. Hindi ito nagustuhan ng ilang mga guro. Dahilan para umani ito ng halo-halong reaksyon at komento. At ito rin ang nag sa netizen para i-delete ang nasabing post. Laman ng modules at sakripisyo ng mga guro trending sa social media, yan ang tinutukan ni Mark Logan. Upuntahan ang bawat sulok para maihatid ang mga modules at pagkatapos ng mahabang araw ng paghahanda ng mga requirements ng mga bagets. Siguro naman, pwedeng humirit. Napakaganda mo naman lakas makaaki Para bang alin na umaawit sa langit Kaya kung magpakakikay man sila, huwag nyo namang isumbong sa principal, ha? Puro kay TikTok. Apo, sinong pupupo kayo? Punta na po kayo doon. O oh, ba? Huwag naman! Mga parents busy sa papel na teachers. Ah, este, balik skwela po. Paano na ang tong it's nai? Ang tomatay? Bagong buhay? Itong tropa ng mga madir, tila may goals na mag-top one. Ang iba ay sus, imbyerna na, sa kasasagot ng module. 
Pero kapansin-pansin din sa mga module ang kakaibang mga tanong at mga sagot. Tulad ng ano ang masasabi mo sa mga taong nananatiling loyal sa minamahal. Sagot, sana all. Ano ang masasabi mo sa katipunan na binuo ni Andres Bonifacio? Sagot, okay lang. Tinawag ni Rizal si Josephine bilang sagot, Baby girl, magbigay ng mga anyong tubig. Isinama mo sa baw. Mamili sa tatlo, coronavirus, social media o module. Sagot mo, ang module ay nagdudulot ng takot sa bawat tao. Kung ang silid ay lugar, ang fiesta ay pangyayari. Ano naman ang kapitbahay? Sagot, si Smosa. Kulayan at gupitin ng mga bata bago idikit sa kahon. My God! Kawawang mga bata! Speaking of kawawa, eto na palang advocacy ngayon ng mga bata. Teacher, kunin nyo na ako dito sa bahay. Ang tapang ni nanay magturo. Eto pa, sumulat ng rap tungkol sa kananasan sa buhay. Problema to, kasi grade 3 pa lang yung sasagot. What is ethics? Ethics, kapag wala kang pantawag, ethics mo na lang. Magbigay ng pangungusap na may tayutay. Sagot, ang tatay ko ay nadapa. Tay, tayutay, tayutay. Mark Logan. At yan ang mga balitang aking nakalap sa aking pagpapatrol. Mary Cecil P. Oxero, nag-uulat para sa bayan. Now, let us reflect on the news report if these incidents were familiar to you. Write and submit your answers to the link given. Number one, are there certain situations or issues that are relatable to you? Number two, Are there certain situations or issues that are not included in the clip but has happened to you? Number three, if there are situations or issues that are encountered, what learning interventions did you implement to answer the learning gap? Number four, what was your takeaway lesson in that situation? Some specific scenarios that we have encountered during the distribution of learning activity sheets. And we will try to brainstorm some interventions that we can do considering the following situation I will be giving to you. Scene 1. Teacher John, a Filipino subject teacher in grade 10, noticed that Jason did not get his learning activity sheets from week 3 to 5. In the recent news, there was a COVID case in Barangay Tuburan. Jason is from Mandawa. What intervention should teacher John do? Sheila, an enrolled grade 7 student, has moved to another town. That's why it is difficult for her to get her last. Teacher Anna is advisor of Sheila. What intervention should teacher Anna do? Easy, easy! Scene 3. In Barangay Batu Batu, 12 senior high students did not submit their last for week 1 to 5. When teacher Sarah texted one of the parents, the parent responded that, Ma'am, oy, naglisod manggud ko no sila og basa og sabot sa ilang last. Based on the situation, what intervention should teacher Sarah do? Isip, isip! Scene 4! Teacher Paul read an online rant on Facebook from Janine saying that Lisuda maning last nagihatag sa Fidel Mundo pang senior high school man. In the comment section, a classmate of Janine commented that Taka man ka sa yun raman ka ayo. Based from the deferring feedback from the last, what intervention should Teacher Paul do? You may write your answers on your laptops in a word format and send it to the output link that will be provided to you. That was Mom Grace, and later on, we shall provide you with learning strategies that will be used in those scenarios. For now, we shall proceed. With the pursuance of the school year 2020-2021, problems arise as some view that equality in attaining quality education is not true to the poor and marginalized. With this decision coming from the Department of Education, a lot of people reacted. 
the Department of Education received backlash and support from different agencies. Other express, how can we address the learning gap? How do we address these learning gaps? Actually, we can address these learning gaps through effective, safe, and systematic learning interventions. Hello there! I am Mary Rochelle Padillo from the Senior High School Department. And I am going to take over the lesson from here. Now, I'm going to discuss in the following slides the responses that are undertaken by the Department of Education. And basically, these are all laid out in the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan. Like what we said a while ago, that the Department of Education's response was stipulated in the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan. In here, they follow the following principles. First is the protection or protect the health, safety, and well-being of learners, teachers, and personnel, and prevent the further transmission of COVID-19. Next is ensure learning continuity through K-12 curriculum adjustments, alignment of learning materials, deployment of multiple learning delivery modalities, provision of corresponding training for teachers and school leaders, and proper orientation of parents or guardians of the learners. Next is to facilitate the safe return of teaching and non-teaching personnel and learners to workplaces and schools, taking into consideration the scenarios projected by the Department of Health and Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases in the Philippines, complemented by also other credible resources and balanced with DepEd's own risk assessments. Next is to be sensitive to equity considerations and concerns and endeavor to address them to the best we can. And lastly, to link the bridge, to link and bridge the BELCP to DepEd's pivot to quality and into the future of education under the framework of Sulung Edukalidad and Futures Thinking in Education. So what we have learned so far from the slides that we have read is that the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan stipulates three things. First is there should be a protection for both parties, which includes the teachers and the students. Next is um, there should be an insurance that learning equity and learning quality are both achieved in this school year. And then the last one is that there should be and a sensitivity to equity of considerations and concerns, which means that as teachers in this in these times, um, we need to be we need to be considerate and we need to broaden our perspective and understanding to the different scenarios that are happening around us. Like for example, naka estudiante na um naka estudyante na ni Balhin, so what should we do should we just cut it off or should we find ways to still provide learning and education for that child or learner i mean yeah once again it's about case to case basis and case to case understanding and then i remember when we had or oh, there was a COVID case in Bienvenido, specifically in Poblacion. And then the next day, our principal announced that we are not going to go to the school. We are going to be working at home. And then everyone stayed at home. Well, that was a response. In a, that was a response respecting what are stipulated in the basic education learning continuity plan, which is one, to protect both parties, the teachers and What does the BLCP stipulate on face-to-face -face learning? In the areas under the moderate and high-risk severity grading, this is not possible. However, there are learners with disabilities whose conditions require face-to-face -face instruction. 
This will be then the subject of further discussion within DepEd with partners and parents. Next is, face-to-face -face option may also be feasible in very low-risk areas such as the geographically disadvantaged and conflict-affected areas or GIDCA. With no history of infection and very low and easily monitored external context, but with teachers and learners living in the vicinity of the area. Next is, any face-to-face -face learning delivery must have proper risk assessment and must adhere to the health protocols in place. Potential learning spaces in the community near the school may be explored to add spaces for the conduct of classes with the appropriate social distancing. I hope that it's all clear. Now let's move on. The, learn the learning interventions that I'm going to include here as per research are not new. They were already introduced and now they are being reintroduced. But of course, we're going to inject and contextualize, localize these programs. So, I am going to read the following programs in the following slides. So, I'm just going to pop up once in a while and give my thoughts about these programs and how can we make it contextualized so that it can be used as a learning program in our community. The type, modality, approach, or strategy that we're going to discuss for the face-to-face -face are the following. First is MISOSA, then IMPACT, then OHSP, and then Project EASE. Next is face-to-face -face and modular learning. And then the last one is community-based instruction for ALS. Now, what is MISOSA? MISOSA is modified in-school and off-school approach. It means that there are two learning environments that are being catered in here. Now, modified in-school, off-school approach frees the children from the confines of the four corners of the classroom as it allows pupils to learn even while at home or in the community. Actually, this is the original concept of MISOSA. MISOSA combines formal and non-formal learning activities to meet the needs for classrooms, learning materials, and teachers. It likewise taps community resources for the instructional materials or sources of knowledge. Under MISOSA, a class of pupils is divided into two groups. Groups 1 goes to class for a period of time, while the group 2 learns at home or in other learning venues, such as barangay hall learning through modules or performing assigned tasks. Now, what is great about Bisosa being used as a learning intervention is that it offers two learning environments. So, it is very much applicable in our community. We can have... Um, we can have the modular learning at home and we can also create um, learning environments or learning spaces. With the right amount of class size and program, this alternative delivery mode, delivery mode is a good learning intervention program. There are two things to remember in MISOSA. First is learning materials must be devised to cater the in-school and off-school approach and class program must address the needed skill and lesson to be mastered. Thus, we are going to um, cherry-pick the, the needed skills or the less mastered skills uh, for that child to master in, that, in, in a certain time and in a certain pace. Next is, class schedule must be prepared and must observe the IATF standard. Currently, all gatherings are not permitted because of the alarming surge of COVID cases in Bohol. Thus, we have to think twice and assess the situation. Now, let's go to the next one. This is called Project Ease. One of the ADMs at the secondary level is the Effective and Affordable Secondary Education or Ease program which was designed and implemented to complement the existing formal system. It is applicable to students who cannot attend schools for a short while or can only attend classes seasonally due to socioeconomic, geographical, and physical circumstances. In addition, EASE program aims to cater 
to advanced students whose learning needs are not met by the conventional learning system. EASE program makes it possible for students to to, for students to learn outside their school through self-instructional modules. When the student goes back to school, he or she will be tested on how well he or she has learned his or her lesson. Now, I believe that our school has already offered this kind of delivery mode. Though the concept of ease is to provide affordable education, its method of giving self-instructional handouts that cater advanced students whose learning needs are not met by the conventional learning system is the perfect fit for fast learners. A while ago, we have an example in our scenario that talks about the divided reaction of the lesson. The fast learners find the lesson very easy while the slow learners are, are lagging. By providing supplemental activities to the fast learners and remediation to slow learners, learning intervention, intervention can be met through Project Ease. Now, let's go to the next one. This is Project Impact or Instructional Management by Parents and Community Teachers. Actually, um, by its name palang, we can really... Um, foresee that this is going to be a good learning intervention program now the extension of educational services beyond formal elementary student education is also provided by impact this was developed by s-e-a-m-e-o enotech to address high student population and high percentage dropouts it is a management system where the parents teachers, and community collaborate to provide the child with quality education at less costs. Learning materials are based on national curriculum standards of the Department of Education. It uses audio and video tapes in English, science, mathematics, Filipinos, and information and communications technology or ICT in teaching the lessons. The goal of impact is to initially address the crowded school population. However, if we put this in the context as a learning intervention, the program offers a great aid as it covers diverse learners. I'm going to reiterate what it employs. First, it employs program teachers for bright pupils um, or program teachers or bright pupils to become aids for a specific task, for example, reading bodies and math tutors. Next is peer group with members of 6 to 8 utilized as a strategy strategy in this program. Next is self-study that allows learners to cater their own pace. Now, Project Impact makes use of collaborative and self-directed approaches, which is a viable option for learning intervention if we're going to use this. Because in the pandemic times, we have a lot of time to do it in our own pace. Now, what we have to do as teachers is first we have to create the material and then do the assessment and lastly, give the feedback. Let's go to OHSP or Open High School Program. More or less, this is an ADM. Now, it is an alternative mode of formal secondary education program run by the Bureau of Secondary Education or BSE of the Department of Education of the Republic of the Philippines. The program provides an opportunity for elementary school graduates, high school dropouts, and successful examinees of the PEPT or the placement test to complete secondary education in a purely distance learning mode. The program provides printed self-learning modules for students to use for their lessons and classroom activities. This not only talks about the students who are lagging off in their lessons, but it talks in a general sense about the students who are lagging in their timeline. So to those who are still in elementary, they can still catch up even amidst the pandemic. Now, let's go to Modified Shifting of Classes, or MSC. In the shifting of classes, teaching is directly focused on concepts with corresponding activities. Supplemental activities and assess assessments shall be done brought by the learners when shifted at home. 
The shifting depends on how many days the competencies could be covered based on the competency codes and the number of competencies to be covered in all learning areas. I think this could only be done if we're going to have the face-to-face -face classes by next year. And I think it's going to happen because there are trials just this uh, just tonight as, as, as I was reading the news. Um the president has a go signal with the trial on face-to-face -face classes now modified shifting of classes can be a good program for it now let's have shifting classes still shifting classes with dyadic teaching or scdt in this scheme there would be two teachers inside the class per learning area the number of learners they would handle should be the total number of learners they handled in the normal days. During the dyadic teaching, learners have to go through a series of individual activities after teaching the learning competencies to be facilitated and monitored by the two teachers. So in here, it's still shifting of classes, but it has a scheme that um, that needs two teachers. And the sad thing about this shifting of classes with dyadic teaching is that we are running out of teachers because most of us are already um, bombarded with different tasks. We are some of us are lagging even with the photocopying and and uh, segregation of the test papers. But of course, with with the plan and commitment, we can all do this. But we need to plan ahead before implementing this kind of learning intervention program. We're going to the programs that are centered and focused only to what is essential. We have ESM-focused teaching. This is for the junior high school. This, in this approach, only English, science, mathematics shall be taught in school. Other learning areas shall be using the modular home-based approach. Next is RESM-focused teaching. This is for the elementary or RESMT. In this approach, only reading, English, science, and mathematics shall be taught in school. Other learning areas shall be using the modular or home-based approach. Last is core specialized focus training or teaching. This is specialized for senior high school. In this approach, only core and specialized subjects shall be taught in school. Applied subjects shall be using the home-based life skill modular approach. So these are just options that the Department of Education are looking into so that they have, um, they have, they have the option to, to choose which among these programs or schemes are going to employ for the face-to-face -face classes. The mentioned strategies before focus only to specific subjects which are deemed important. I think it is a great intervention strategy to those learners who still did not master the basics. I know that as teachers, we have encountered students who are slow readers and are lagging in math. Through giving activities which center on the basic and essential, there is a chance that after the pandemic, they might catch up. Now, the last one is for the out-of-school youths and those who are lagging in timeline. Now, we have the community-based instruction. The learner facilitators or facilitator instructional manager or ALS mobile teachers or district ALS coordinator goes to a CTO or a barangay with a set of learning materials to conduct learning lessons until such time the learners have become literate before going to another CTO or barangay. However, depending on the need of the learners, the ALS mobile teacher goes back to a CTO or barangay for visitation and follow-up. Most of the time, instead of the learners going to the community learning center, the ALS mobile teacher brings the learning materials to the learners to help them acquire basic literacy skills or continuing education. Let's highlight community learning center. So I think that you have heard this from, um, from previous discussions or meetings. Actually, some districts are using this. In Taliban, I think they are currently using the community learning center. 
However, in doing such um, approach, we have to follow the regulations coming from the IATF, coming from the uh, Division of Bohol, and of course, coming from our local government unit. So we must have a rain check on the different um, cautions and warnings before we conduct the learning in community learning centers. Now the question is, can we conduct face-to-face -face learning session with our students? Yes. However, we must follow the guidelines prescribed by IATF and DepEd's required health standard framework. Now the question is, do we still have mass gatherings? Now, mass gatherings such as, but not limited to, movie screenings, concerts, sporting events, and other entertainment activities, religious services, and work conferences shall be allowed provided that participants shall be limited to 50% of the seating or venue capacity. For K-12 basic education, the basic education learning continuity plan of the DepEd shall be adopted and this is coming from the Omnibus Guidelines. Now, what are the DepEd or DepEd's Required Health Standards Framework? Actually, there are four. They are increase physical and mental resilience, reduce contact, reduce transmission, and reduce duration of infection. Question. If a student decides to change his or her learning modality, is she allowed to do that? Yes, as long as it, she has valid reasons and aside from that, teachers should cater these changes to ensure that everyone receives education in these times. The DLL or the DLDM adopted by the school or chosen by the learner or parent may be changed when deemed necessary and possible based on but not limited to any of the following. Health and physical distancing protocols and other guidelines set in the respective areas. Availability of public transport. Changes in the health status of the learner. Results showing that the learner is not doing well in the learning delivery modality chosen and indications and reports of negligence and abuse validated through home visitations. Now, let's cite this example. Um, let's have C, changes in the health status of the learner. Now, let's not just focus on the learner but the whole community. I remembered when there was a high surge of COVID cases in Malingan, a lot of students were given online um, modules because they cannot get the modules because they were on quarantine or they were locked down at that time. So that is an example of considering situations based on case-to-case -case basis. Now, another question. What will happen to learners who do not have household facilitators? Let's define terms first. Household facilitators are parents or guardians. They're considered um, tutors in their homes. For learners without available learning facilitators at home, subject teachers or a cluster learning facilitator may conduct home visits following social distancing protocols or they may communicate through text messages, phone, live chats, or through other available forms of communication to provide assistance or remediation. Teachers or learning facilitators may be five provided with load, allowance, and traveling expenses chargeable against local funds subject to availability of funds and applicable rules, rules and regulations. So, as teachers, if we have we have found out that that person or that child or that learner has no um, learning facilitator, it is our job to intervene and provide remediation of the situation. Now, who are exempted to conduct to conduct home visitations? Since we are talking about home visitations. The following teachers shall be exempted from home visitation during ECQ, MECQ, and GCQ. First, teachers who are 60 years old and above, teachers with immunodeficiency, comorbidities, or other health risk. 
teachers who are pregnant and teachers affected by the respective local COVID severity classification in their area of residence, in which case, school officials like school heads, public schools, district supervisors, education program supervisors, and other responsible community stakeholder may be assigned to attend to the organized clusters of learners, particularly in cases where assistance of a learning facilitator is much needed by the learners. Strong, strong school, home, and community is needed at this time. Now, what should our school do to strengthen community partnership? In the context of the present crisis, dialogue with parents and the wider community is a key step to ensure that the school, parents, or guardians, and the, and the wider community have reached a degree of shared accountability and responsibility for the learning delivery modalities. Now, school administrators teachers, parents, guardians, and community partners shall provide adequate and appropriate guidance and support for the learners to ensure that their new experience with these learning modalities shall be properly transitioned both at home and in school. While mass gathering is not yet allowed by the IATF, school shall initiate online orientation, program for parents, online trainings for learning facilitators, and webinars on home school partnership. Now, our lesson was about learning interventions, but we haven't tackled about why should we conduct learning intervention. Where well, first, the goal is to provide intervention to learners who cannot manage independent learning, including learners with disabilities and special needs. Next is to provide aid to those who do not have a household member or any responsible adult available to provide instructional support and facilitate distance learning delivery modalities. Next is to ensure that holistic education is given to the child which will not only focus on academics but shall encompass the spiritual and psycho-emotional growth of the child. So help the students, inspire them, and let them know that you are there for them and that you are in touch with counselors or mental health experts if needed.